Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the 2023 Division III Men's Lacrosse Selection Show right here on NCAA.com. I'm Brendan Gulick. It's a pleasure to be with you as we introduce to you the 38 teams that are going to contend for a national championship here this year. Conference Championship Weekend was flat out awesome. There were some dramatic late goals, stellar defensive performances, even a couple surprise results, which always makes this time of year just so much fun. RIT, your two-time defending national champs. They beat Union last spring 12-10 in a great title game. And they just knocked off Union 18-9 this afternoon to win an 11th straight Liberty League title too. So they're hot and they're in the tournament. But several other national powerhouse programs are ready to dethrone the Tigers and happy to take a chance at bringing home a national championship trophy. 244 teams played Division III lacrosse this year. Of the 38 teams in the field, 28 clinched automatic bids by winning their league title. That means we have just 10 additional bids to hand out at large for the rest of the country. I'm sure there are more than 10 programs that think they're worthy of an invitation, so we won't delay the drama too much longer. This year's championship game will be held in conjunction with Divisions 1 and 2. It's Memorial Day weekend, May 27th and 29th at Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia. For all the latest info and to purchase tickets to this year's championship, just head over to NCAAtickets.com. Bracket has 38 teams, four quadrants. The top left and bottom left quads are going to have 10 schools. And then on the other side of the bracket, there'll be nine teams in both the top right and in the bottom right sections. Ready to go? Let's get to it. Why don't we start in the top left quadrant? Nine teams available. We open our field with the top ranked team in the country. For the fifth year in a row, the Tufts Jumbos are NESCAC champions. They've earned the automatic bid to the national tournament. Tufts was the near unanimous number one team in the nation coming into the weekend. And holy smokes, did they make that apparent this afternoon. They beat Amherst 20 to 13 in the semis Saturday. And then they whacked Middlebury in the championship game 19 to six. They led that game both 10 nothing and 16 to one before they finally allowed a second goal late in the third quarter. Three time national champs are in the tournament for the 14th straight year and 15th time in program history. They are also the only undefeated team in the nation still standing. Senior Jack Boyden leads all of NCAA lacrosse with 127 points. Tufts has 10 players with 10 or more goals this season. Maine Maritime won the North Atlantic Conference Championship on Sunday over SUNY Delhi, 18-9. Back-to-back titles now for the Mariners, who are led by Jaden Wilson. 67 goals and 107 points this season, good for top five in the country. They'll open up against Emmanuel. Emmanuel took home its first GNAC crown since 2016 with a 16-8 win over St. Joseph on Saturday. Get this, the Saints scored nine straight goals over a 15-minute stretch in the second and third quarters. They won the conference title running away. Randy Castle, tournament most outstanding player. Our first setup second round game starts here with York. York down Stevenson 14-9 to win the MAC Commonwealth. Spartans had a great run last year, coming up just one win shy of a national championship appearance. Brandon Childs put together a really tough schedule outside of league play this year, made sure his team was ready to push for this year's national championship. Cabrini won the Atlantic East 23 times now in program history. They've done that. Maybe it's a good omen for the Cavaliers as we prepare to open the 2023 national tournament. They smoked Marymount 23 to six to earn that championship. But another solid season for Steve Colfer's squad. Are they primed for a deep run this spring? We'll find out. York and Cabrini, second round matchup. They are certainly still partying in Granville after Quinn O'Donnell lifted Denison past Kenyon in the NCAC title game on Sunday, 14-13. What a second half comeback for the Big Red, who beat the Owls for the third year in a row in that conference championship game. Kenyon led the game 10-3 at halftime, but O'Donnell's goal came with 10 seconds left in regulation and clinched the auto bid for yet another North Coast Championship for Denison. Seventh straight and eighth overall NCAA tournament for the Big Red since the sport was introduced by the conference in 2013. 
Illinois Wesleyan, an automatic bid. They're heading to the tournament for a fifth time after knocking out Transylvania in the CCIW Championship, 14-11 the final there. Titans under the weekend ranked second nationally out of those 244 teams with 47 ground balls per game, 11 straight wins for the Titans, and they will open things up against Aurora, who's back in the field, champions as the NACC. Aurora bludgeoned Illinois Tech 22 to four in Saturday's title game. Spartans top 10 scoring offense and scoring defense this season. And they got a 10 game winning streak coming into the tournament. Last two teams in the top left hand corner of this bracket. It's our very first revealed at large berth. A big deep breath for Lynchburg. You're in. The Hornets slipped to Washington and Lee in the ODAC final, but they've been fabulous this year against what ended up being an excellent schedule. And you better not give them man up chances because few teams anywhere in the nation are more consistent at making you pay for those mistakes than Lynchburg. The Empire 8 still runs through St. John Fisher. The Cardinals took home a fourth consecutive title. Tournament MVP Jacob Galena scored five times to help put away Nazareth 19 to seven and clinch the automatic bid once again in 2023. Okay, to the bottom left-hand quadrant we go now, where opening round hosting duties go to the two-time defending national champions, Liberty League champion this year, RIT, grabbed the automatic bid. They hammered Union 18 to nine this afternoon, led by tournament MVP Taylor Jensen. Luke Pilcher scored five goals today to lead the Tigers to victory too. RIT lost only once all season to a very good Christopher Newport team, but otherwise they've outscored their opposition by nearly seven goals per game. RIT hoping to become the first three-peat national champ since Salisbury did it way back in 2003, four, and five. RIT will play the winner of New England College and Westcon. New England College beat Rosemont 19-11 on Saturday to win the CSAC and NECC Alliance Championship, which gets one of the 28 bids to the tournament. The Pilgrims are in for the sixth D3 tournament under head coach Jed Brown. They just won their eighth conference championship since 2014. Meanwhile, Westcon beat UMass Boston 14-9 on Saturday. They claimed the Little East title for the first time since 2008. Congratulations to the Pilgrims and to Westcon. A very nervous wait ends here for Williams. The Eves are dancing. Williams lost a tough game to Middlebury in the NESCAC semis on Saturday but they get one of the coveted 10 at-large berths into the field. Babson heading back to the dance for the second time in three years after Topher Bowers' overtime game winner crushed MIT's title dreams 15-14. Beavers got four goals from Chi-Chi Price Saturday. They've won eight in a row now as the tournament gets rolling. Okay, Middlebury was denied their first conference crown since 2007 this afternoon, but still easily an at-large selection. Panthers' only two losses all year are to Tufts, 19-15 back on April 1st, and then earlier this afternoon in the NESCAC final. Pretty steady offensive attack, man. The Panthers are very solid. Six players have scored at least 20 goals this season. St. Mary's and AQ out of the United East as the Seahawks won the conference title for the second time under Jason Childs. They knocked out SUNY Morrisville 17-10 to earn an auto grid here this spring. Friday night in the Bronx was a blast for the U.S. Merchant Marine Academy after they dethroned three-time defending Skyline champion SUNY Maritime. 15-7 the final in the title game. First conference title for the Mariners since 2018 as they put together a great performance against the privateers. Last year's national runner up, Union, an at large bid on the board here. They had their best season in program history in 2022. They backed it up with another great showing in 2023. Now, despite dropping the Liberty League title match, the Dutchman put together a great final stretch of the season, made a good enough impression on the committee to warrant an invitation to the national tournament. Union will play Western New England, the Golden Bears, back-to-back -back Commonwealth Coast champions. So they're in the field again. Nice run for the Bears last year. They won a couple games before bowing out to Union in the third round 
10th conference title in program history, so a fun rematch there for Western New England against Union. Okay, 20 of the 38 teams have been revealed. We are through the left-hand side of the bracket, so we'll take a quick break. We'll give you the right half of it, unveiling the remaining 18 teams in just a moment. There's an energy swelling out beyond the limits of your expectations. A universe where fandom reigns supreme. Once you're in it, it changes you. Instead of one of one, you're one of many. A blissful sea of chaos. Go beyond your limits and enter the NCAA universe. Get your seats today at NCAA.com slash tickets. Hey everyone, welcome back on NCAA.com. Now only four of the 10 at-large bids have been handed out, although we are technically more than halfway through the field since there are 20 teams on the left side and 18 on the right side of our bracket. Fair to point out though, the order in which the at-large teams are revealed does not necessarily reflect the order in which those 10 teams were selected. Let's get right back to it. We move to the top right-hand corner of the bracket now where the Salisbury Seagulls are staying home. No automatic qualifier out of the Coastal Lacrosse Conference, but Salisbury is back in the field with one of the most stacked resumes in the country. They beat Christopher Newport on Sunday afternoon 9-4 to win the CLC title, and they've now won 40 straight home games across several seasons. In fact, in the last USILA poll before today's bracket unveiling, the Seagulls are the only other team outside of Tufts to receive any first place votes in the national rankings. Salisbury's defense, tenacious as usual. This group can score at will. Colorado College on the board. They've had a week to get healthy and get tournament focused after beating Southwestern last weekend to win the HCLC title. Mike Horowitz and the Tigers have won seven of the last eight conference tournament crowns, five of which came before joining this league, but they sure know how to play well come tournament time. They are gonna be a tough challenge for Salisbury. For the second time in as many seasons, an at-large bid off the board to Amherst. The Mammoths lost, uh, lost to Tufts in the NESCAC semis on Saturday, but they've registered a bunch of really high quality wins and they did just enough to earn their way into the field. Amherst, the national runner up in 2019, but they're still looking for that elusive first national championship. Sean Wood's team making its ninth appearance in the NCAA tournament now in program history. What a fun Saturday for SUNY Geneseo after the Knights won their first SUNYAC title since 2007. They beat Cortland 13 to seven this weekend, earning a fourth championship in program history. Senior goalie Mark Pav, the tournament MVP after another brilliant performance on Saturday. They are still celebrating at Washington and Lee after the Generals earned their 12th Old Dominion Athletic Conference trophy thanks to a thrilling 12-11 win over Lynchburg. A 16-win season for the Generals tied a program record set during 2019. It was a title game worthy of the billing as the top two ranked teams in Region 4 went toe-to-toe -to -toe all afternoon. The Generals are a top 10 team in the nation this year pretty much any way you slice it. That said, they're really hoping to write a better story this spring after a frustrating loss in the first round last year in the national tournament. Center College, the Southern Athletic Association champion. They beat Sewanee 10-9 last weekend, so the Colonels are on the board. Actually, the Colonels trailed 7-3 late in the first half, but Ryan Black scored a goal with one second left before halftime. Man, did that bring better vibes into the locker room. It was just the boost they needed as center came out firing in the third quarter. Ryder Knowlton scored a man-up goal with 24 seconds left to clinch the league championship. They'll play Pfeiffer, who topped Southern Virginia 12-9 in the USA South title game Saturday. Pfeiffer got a great record coming into the tournament, 17-1, having stumbled only once to Piedmont this year. Congrats to head coach Tucker Nelson and his staff, guiding the Falcons to their second conference championship, avenging last year's loss to Southern Virginia. You know, the disappointment that Swarthmore is feeling after losing its first conference championship game appearance certainly mitigated here because the Garnet are in anyways. Von Mabs, 55 goals, 28 assists. He led the way for the Garnet this season. Swat beat a very good Gettysburg team in the semifinals to make it to the title game. 
Grove City, the Wolverines steamrolled St. Vincent 27-3 in the PAC Championship. So Grove City's back in the field. Wolverines continue to be the class of the league. They have now won 28 straight conference matches. It was a frustrating start to the season for the Wolverines against some excellent teams. But they got it rolling at the right time. And they are tournament bound in 2023. Okay, we're moving to the bottom right quadrant. Only nine teams left to unveil. No auto bid available to Christopher Newport, but the captains were quite clearly one of the best teams in America this season, and they are opening things up at home this weekend. It's been a banner year for Warner Cabanis and Kobe Oslander. This loaded senior class will have a chance to chase a championship. They've never won a title in men's lacrosse. They absolutely have the firepower to make it happen, and, and maybe Mikey Thompson's team can channel some of the good mojo from the men's basketball team. You might have seen it in the wintertime. They won the national championship on a buzzer beater back in March. Some retribution for Hope. Automatic bid this year. The Flying Dutch won their seventh game in a row on Saturday. They hammered top seed Albion 23-14 in the MIAA title, losing to Albion in the regular season, but got him back in the tournament. Fourth time in five years that the MIAA champion avenged a loss in the regular season to the team they played in the championship game. Sam Bowen led the way Saturday with six goals. Michael Mann, Alex Goodall four each. Third trip to the NCAA tournament now for Hope. Only a couple more at-large bids available, and one of them off the board here. Say hello to Gettysburg. They've been highly ranked in the national polls pretty much all season, but they lost to Swarthmore twice, including in the Centennial Conference Tournament on Friday. Bullets lead the country in clearing percentage, 919 clip. They also take incredibly good care of the ball, leading the country in fewest turnovers per contest, just under 14. Welcome back to the landmark champion, Scranton. Back in the field here, their freshman goalkeeper, Declan Allen, made a huge save with seven seconds left in the landmark title game. They held off Elizabethtown and claimed the league championship. Second conference title in program history for the Royals, who got a game winner from Pat McCormick with just three minutes left in regulation. Dickinson back in the field after winning the Centennial for the second straight year. They beat Swarthmore Sunday to win the sixth league championship. Red Devils beat Stevens in their first tournament game last year. Then they lost to Gettysburg and they are hoping for a deeper run in 2023. Dickinson hosting this weekend. They'll have to wait and see who they play. There are four teams left and we start here with John Carroll. They are the Ohio Athletic Conference champion for the seventh season in a row. And for the third year in a row, they pulled off some heroics away from home after losing to Baldwin Wallace in a really physical game a few weeks ago. John Carroll traveled back to its crosstown rivals and they snapped BW's 16 game winning streak, won the OAC championship by a score of six to five. Matt Berdiziak had the game winner with just a couple minutes to play. Make it now five straight wins for JCU over the Yellow Jackets in the OAC tournament, despite losing to them in the regular season each of the last three years. True to form, JCU BW, the top two defensive teams in the nation. Makes that 6-5 game feel uh, pretty right on par. Saturday's championship game at George Finney Stadium, the lowest scoring OAC title game ever. Well done, head coach Joe Routenstrout and the Blue Streaks. Arguably the most dramatic game of conference championship weekend came in the Midwest Lacrosse Conference. Lake Forest scored with 3.3 seconds left in the game. And they edged out Dubuque 10-9. Ryan Dusevich and his teammates will never forget that moment, nor will they forget seeing their name on the bracket after earning their way into the national tournament this spring. Very last at-large bid off the board, and it goes to Kenyon. Kenyon is in, the Owls beat Denison in the regular season, but they couldn't hold off a late comeback from the Big Red in the NCAC title game on Sunday afternoon. Still though, 15 and two this season, a handful of wins over excellent teams was enough to earn one of the at-large bids. David Chintala, 52 goals this year. Thomas Nelson, 166 ground balls. They lead the way for the Owls. And the last team on the bracket, you got an automatic bid, you know you're here. It's a three-peat for the Mac Freedom champion, Stevens, who knocked off to sales 26 to 15 Saturday. Ducks scored 11 unanswered goals. They cruised to another conference title. 
This year's team already 17 wins, tying the 2012 group for most in the program's storied history. This offense is the real deal, man. They've scored 20 or more goals 11 times, including each of the last four games now. Head coach Gene Peluso surpassed 300 career wins. That is third among all active divisions of NCAA coaching. He's at 311 wins in his career. Okay, our bracket set. 2023 National Tournament begins this week on May 10th. Six opening round games. That'll cut our field down to 32 for the second round, which begins next weekend. For all the latest tournament information regarding game times, locations, and ticketing, you can keep it right here on NCA.com or check out your favorite team's website at your local school. I'm Brendan Gulick. Thanks for hanging out and watching. We want to wish good luck to all 38 teams competing here these next few weeks, and we hope to see you in the city of brotherly love Memorial Day weekend. There's an energy swelling out beyond the limits of your expectations. A universe where fandom reigns supreme. Once you're in it, it changes you. Instead of one of one, you're one of many. A blissful sea of chaos. Go beyond your limits and enter the NCAA universe. Get your seats today at NCAA.com slash tickets.